Yeah, yeah. Just right. <laughs> right. Um, yeah so Blaine was kind of wrong. Um, I, I don't know if I can really teach anyone how to uh, uh, be better at CSS because I myself am not that good at it. Um, for me, CSS is constant trial and error, um, which I don't know if it's like that for anyone else or if like anyone else actually understands like how box model works. Um, what you think after like four years of doing it, I would know exactly how it works. But anyway, I'm going to talk about future CSS. Uh, I'm Cole Voss. I'm a front-end engineer here at Huddle, and those are some, some social things about me. So why future CSS? Uh, JavaScript recently has gotten a lot of future-focused attention. Um, things like ES6 slash ES2015 uh, or ES7, which is allegedly to ES2016, and then to kind of bring all those things into the current day, Babel, uh, which used to be called 6 to 5, or about 6 to 5 or 5 to 6 or something like that. Six to five. Numbers to other numbers. And that's why they renamed it to Babel, <laughs> because eventually it'd be 7 to 6 and 8 to 7, and then they renamed the languages all together. Um, and so I think it's ready, I think CSS is ready for some future focused attention. CSS and JavaScript, at least in the, in the web and the front end world, they work in it and a lot of times. Um, and so CSS4, it's getting specced out right now. Um, there's something called CSS Next, and yes, like it's all lowercase. I had, I had to like retype it like 10 times because I camel paste it. Um, that's essentially a, a, a Babel type thing for, for CSS. And then post CSS, which um, allows us to use um, CSS Next, um, along with a lot of other really, really cool CSS deals. So what is past CSS? I'm gonna consider past CSS anything previous to right now, and now. Um, so that's gonna be CSS <laughs> or anything before that. Um, to one, I don't even know, like, you know, inline styles, blah, 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 which are kind of coming back, it's really weird. Um, CSS precompilers, things like SAS, LESS, Stylus, there's like 13 other ones out there. Um, I have used SAS for a long time. It's a fantastic tool uh, for writing better looking CSS. Um, if you're using actual .sass files, you don't have to use semicolons, and that's pretty neat. Um, or brackets. Um, less um, and stylus kind of do the same things. Um, but with those, they're huge. They're like SAS is written in C++ or C? C? There's something that does, has it's nothing to do with it. Ruby. Ruby. OK, so C. Yeah. yeah that's what yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what? And so, like you know, it's like this whole other like little ecosystem that has to run on Ruby. Even it uh, doesn't have a whole lot to do with the front end. Um, global style sheets, giant style sheets that apply to your entire application instead of modular style sheets or modular namespace uh, pieces of, of CSS. And then monolithic uh, CSS libraries, things like SAS and like Bourbon or Neat or Bitters. Like those are great tools, but they're huge, and I might only want a little bit of one of them. And so I don't want to get drunk off of them. I only want to sip. Uh, so, but this is a JS meetup, so why am I talking about CSS? Well, post CSS is why I'm talking about it. Um, so what is post CSS? Post CSS is a tool for transforming CSS with JS plugins. There you go, there's your little JS. These plugins can support variables and mixins, transpile future CSS, inline images, and much more. Um, they can do the same work as preprocessors like SAS and LESS and Stylus, but post CSS is modular. There's, there's the keyword of my presentation. Uh, three to 30 times faster and much more powerful. And those are, those are quotes directly taken from uh, the, the source, uh, from, from their GitHub. So what do you mean by modular? Um, it, does the, it, it only comes with the following things. Um, a CSS parser, a CSS node tree API, source map generator, and a node tree stringifier. The rest is done with plugins, um, very similar to Node. Uh, Node is not that big, it's not that much, it's just kind of a platform, and then you put the rest of the stuff into it. Same with like a COA, COA framework, uh, which is a, a web framework for Node that is just like a little bit of stuff, and then you just add in a bunch of middleware that you want to use. Um, so you can think of them like some of these plugins as NPM modules, um, and they're all written in JS. You cannot write them any other way, which is pretty cool. That's what I'm talking about. It. Um, and that means that they just do small groups of functionality, small things. Um, they don't do everything for you because you might not want to do everything. Um, and so all this, all of this right here is actually just straight up ripped out of their, their GitHub um, because I wrote this today. Um, benefits, performance. 
Um, post CSS, it's written in JavaScript, so it's going to be fast. I'm not claiming that JavaScript is super fast and faster than everything ever, but this is a JS meetup, so we might as well say that. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, future CSS, it gives us the opportunity to start thinking about the future of CSS now before the future gets here. Um, so we can do transpiling and uh, really neat things like that. Um, W3C, like they've got a ton of specs out and I was just like sitting and reading them today and it sounds like they're excited about these new things. Like I could actually read excitement in their specs. They're like, yeah, this is fun. Um, and there's new abilities. Um, like you can just do really weird things with post CSS. Like translate CSS into British CSS as in like different spellings of color and gray. <laughs> which is kind of neat, or Canadian, or Australian. Um, so let's actually talk about some of the different things. Um, so take my hand and I will show you a land full of wonders and magic and some CSS stuff. Um, so the first library I want to talk about is called Rucksack. Um, that's like the GitHub like, URL after GitHub. Um, and what Rucksack does is it just makes CSS less painful to write. Lots of dashes, um, lots of colons, I suppose you still have to use colons, but lots of, like you never know where the dashes are for something's gonna be one word or two words or nine. Um, and so you can uh, alias CSS properties, you can see um, FS, you can just make that the alias for font size. So in the rest of your style sheets, when I want to declare a font size, I just write FS colon. I don't have to write nine more characters. Um, background VG, background is a hard word to type, I don't know why, I always misspell it. Um, yeah, and so, and so you can see like when they're uh, declaring their food class, like they're just using, there's four characters there, it's pretty cool, to, for their attributes. Um, you can shorthand positioning properties, so I don't, over down in the bottom, you, you don't have to do position absolute, 0 to 20 pixels, you can just do absolute, which is kind of neat, I think that's actually really cool, because I actually, when I was first learning CSS and and like beginning to learn positioning, again, I still don't understand it. I would actually just do like absolute, I would do that on accident um, because it made sense. Um, and then just easy clear fixing, um, like it's just right there. Normally you have to declare that at the top of like global.css or do something really crazy to get your clears or just like include that in like many, many things. Um, so that's Rucksack, it does a lot more things. These are the kind of the couple things that I thought were really really cool about it. I guess I missed um, modern transitioning functions. Um, I've always wanted to use some of the really cool ones, like the, the elastic ones and stuff like that, because they look neat. Um, and with this, they give you that, that Bezier to kind of like, it does all that for you without you having to figure all of that out. Um, CSS Nano, um, again, same GitHub structure. Um, it optimizes CSS and everything for production. Similar to a Minify or an Uglify, um, but it does more than just take out all the white spaces. And when we're writing CSS, there's a lot of white space, a lot of returns. Every attribute has, you know, it's on its own line. We're returning, we're tabbing, especially if you're nesting. I suppose that would get compiled, but a lot of white space to take out, um, especially when there's more than one uh, uh, property for an attribute. Say things like when you're shorthanding margin, you've got top, right, left, and bottom in the right order. Um, and it's gonna it's gonna shorten all that. It's gonna do some really cool things for you there. Um, font weights like um, bold, lighter, normal. Uh, they'll just turn those into integers for you um, because that's less characters for you to have to send to the client. Um, duplication removal. So if I declare styles for headers like just just H ones like on accident multiple times the same way, or if I find it if it finds it in multiple files, it's just gonna include that once in my production code. Um, outdated vendor prefixes, I can't remember the exact example they gave for that, but it was like we used to have to put a moz and a web kit in front of it, but now we don't, it's just a standard spec. And it will take that out. So you could throw old code through this and it's still gonna make it as tiny as possible. And then, so the bottom one, the minimizing of longhand and shorthand properties, it's kind of like the opposite. So I mentioned the margin thing. So if you did margin 10 pixels, zero, and then 10 pixels, that's redundant because that's saying top and bottom are 10 and left and right are zero. You could just do that by saying 10 pixels, zero. It's the same thing. And so it's gonna take that, that second 10 pixels out of there. So that's gonna take some of your, you know, bits away. Um, and then the opposite, say you do margin top and then 
10 pixels, margin bottom, five, you know, you name them all separately, margin dash top. It's just gonna combine them into margin, you know, one, two, three, and four, which is really cool. That, that's a lot more than just stripping out white space characters. So this is the one I really, really wanna talk about. Uh, CSS Next. This is that forward thinking CSS library. Um, and I'll just kind of let you digest these nice pictures. So I'm a big Doctor Who fan. So when I thought of the feature, I thought of Doctor Who. Um, I used to love SpongeBob, and I think that's a, that was a, one of the funniest parts. And actually, the DeLorean is the background of CF, CSS Next.io. Um, so I decided to rip that off as well. So seriously. CSS Next. It allows us to use new CSS specs today by transpiling them to current CSS specs. Um, likening this to JavaScript and what JavaScript is currently going through, uh, ES6 got like, like it was official, like officially announced or whatever, Blaine presented on it last month. Um, last month, and that's really exciting. Um, I've written a bunch of, of ES6 code. Um, it's really nice. You can do some really cool things with it. That's what CSS can, like we can start doing those things with CSS now. Um, but no one really talks about it. Like I've read like one blog post about it. You guys might be like way ahead of me on this though. Like um, if you are, you can definitely pipe up. Um, and so what can it do? What, what can we do with you know, CSS next? What are our you know, like classes or our generators or you know, things like that that we, we got with ES6? Custom properties, we can do variables now in just normal CSS. We don't have to, well we won't have to, we kind of have to transpile them out. We won't have to compile them. Variables are awesome in CSS. When I have a header, a group of headers, a certain style, and they're blue, and then my designer says, no, every header on our entire product has to be light blue. I don't have to go through and change the X codes of every header style implementation ever. I can do that with variables. I mean, you guys know how variables work, but in CSS, if you're just writing CSS, you have to do that. It's really gross. Custom media queries, they're pretty great. Um, we don't have to constantly just say like media query, you know, like 12 max and 80 minimum every time with just CSS. Um, custom selectors, these are really cool. These are probably the coolest thing because you can't really do them with um, things like SAS, I don't believe or less or anything like that. Essentially, I can shove like nine selectors into one, one variable essentially. So I can say dash dash headers is H1, H2, H3, H4, all the way to six. And if you're playing seven. Um, <laughs> you tried to do that once. I did it once. Uh, <laughs> it didn't work. Um, and, and then every time I want to style those headers, I don't have to, you know, type or you know I don't have to take up tons of space by saying H1 through 6 I can just say headers it's really cool uh, standard um, color manipulation I mean you know uh, just change colors with CSS I don't have to bring in nine different libraries and figure them out and stuff like that like it's a spec now it's pretty cool or will be um, pseudo class matchers um, essentially I can say that, uh, when when it's hovered and Focus and nine other pseudo classes. I can just kind of like include all of them in one little nice. It's like as if there were arguments in a function instead of having to just chain them together. Um, and then not level four. Um, when I read that not was supported, I was like, oh, that's really exciting. Like because I had to do something crazy for knots. Um, not only took one argument. I could only say not, and then some other class or not hovered or something like that. Now we can pass multiple things into not really neat. Um, that's the end of my slides. So I have just, um, I guess I'll show you, um, so this is a, a CSS Next playground. Um, it's on cssnext.io. Um, I'll show you all this code that looks way better um, in Vim because Vim rules. Um, okay. <laughs> um, Alright, can you guys see that? Or do I need to Zoom bump it up a little bit more? I think you need to switch the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a couple of years. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, up here I'm just declaring a bunch of stuff. It's, uh, uh, this is where I'm declaring my variables or my custom 
attributes, custom value, I can't remember what they're calling them. I'm calling them variables because I'm a renegade. Um, so I'm declaring a header color, um, and it's red, um, but it's a little bit translucent. I'm bringing down the alpha, which is a kind of opacity, ten, down 10%. Um, and then I've got some other header colors, which I'm getting crazy, and I'm using the variable of header colors, and then I'm raising that alpha 20% for some reason, which we'll just put it at one. Um, I've got some custom selectors. Honestly, this is the one I'm probably most excited about. Um, so I throw all of those into something called headers, and I never have to type H1 through 4 ever again. It's awesome. Um, and then just some more variables, a custom media query. Uh, one thing I kind of skipped over was media query ranges. We can now do things like, uh, like this. I suppose we want to do this. Like that, so I can say like if it's between 30 and or if it's, well that doesn't make much sense. Um, but if it, if it made sense, <laughs> it would, uh, uh, you, can, you can do ranges. So you can do less than 30 and greater than 40 or the opposite, um, which is awesome. So when I'm declaring these things, headers is then going to compile down to this um, in, in CSS3. Um, eventually, like the actual spec, we'll, we'll just be able to like not have to throw through a transpiler or post CSS or anything like that. We'll look like what's on this side over here on the left, um, and that will be red. Um, so I'm just doing headers, and then I'm putting, I'm, I'm making them red. All of them will be red, and so you can see over here that that's what's happening. Um, I think this is a little outdated. That probably shouldn't be here. Um, so then the next one, headers that are, do not have a class of selected and that are not being covered, um, and or I suppose, um, I'm setting those to be another color of red, which is just that completely opaque, and then I'm also giving them a 20 pixel padding all, all the way around. This is a beautiful web page, by the way. Uh, <laughs> and so you can see, this is what it's creating. Oh, that's a lot, like, I would not want to have a style sheet full of that graph, and I have before. Um, and so you can see, like, I'm just, I just have a 20 pixel padding and some red stuff. Um, the next thing, which I kind of went a little crazy and added like nine different features in here. So in my custom media query that I wrote, and I, I put it into a variable, essentially a media query variable, when things are smaller than 30 EM um, that are being hovered, that none of this would make sense in like real life, but I wanted to combine them all to be crazy. If they're being hovered or focused, and they don't have a class of blue or small, then we are going to give them a smaller padding of five pixels because that's what I declared at the top over here. So this is what that creates. That would be absolutely disgusting to have, like include in all of like in my style sheets, but with CSS3 and no extra pre-compiles compilers, that's what we had to do. Eventually, browsers are going to be able to just parse what's on the left and we don't have to send these giant files full of 45 selectors just like to not select small blue headers that are being hovered. And you know, so that, that's really cool stuff. Um, I don't, I've never actually personally used post CSS. I've done a lot of reading about it. I haven't had a chance to use it yet. My next project will almost definitely have it, um, whether it's personal for work or uh, for some the kind of lab stuff we do here at Huddle. Um, because I, can, I, I don't have to include nine extra languages into my build process, things like C or Ruby or anything that any other pre-compiler is gonna be used with. Those are slow. Um, right now, I spend probably, actually a small fraction of my day, but too much time waiting for my CSS to compile. Um, and it kind of makes me mad. Um, those don't fit, those types of pre-compilers don't fit into things like Gulp, Webpack, very well. I've spent a lot of time trying to get those things to work, and it makes me mad. Um, all of all of these things, Post CSS has a loader for Webpack, a Grunt, a Gold module, um, Browserify, um, just a command line. So very easy to implement into your build process, and it's it's pretty awesome. Uh, please check it out. Um, I want to raise awareness. That's what this presentation is about. It's not because it's amazing because I've used it. Just because like the things I know it can do are pretty awesome. So. That's it. I have a question for you. Yeah. So once it gets to the browser, uh, 
do you have any source maps at all to be able to pinpoint exactly what line is causing the issues? Uh, post CSS, one of the like the four things it comes with is a uh, source map generator. Um, I don't know how it works yet because again, I haven't used it. So yeah, it, it will be able to, I believe, source map some of these things. I believe that would also depend on the the libraries you're using, like CSS Next, if it can source, if that knows how to create the right source maps, then yeah, that'll be pretty awesome. Or if you're running it through the, the CSS Nano or anything like that. Um, so I have been really, I, have been, I also have very little practice with source maps, so, um, but that's one of the built-in features, one of the very few built-in features of, of CSS. And actually, uh, what you were talking about with streams, that made me think, I could take all of those libraries that I just talked about, and there's like a hundred more, um, and I could stream those into each other, I suppose, um, with yeah. like that. I just, that you made me think of that. Um, so I could, I could alias all my um, my attributes, um, and then I could run them through a CSS Next transpiler, and then I could minify them all with CSS Nano, and that's a lot of things. It probably wouldn't take much time at all, and. It's all using JavaScript, and since we're here, we might as well give a round of applause for JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs>